Good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we are so appreciative to have such an awesome panel with us today. We have Brianna Fisher with the Residence Inn by Marriott, Damian Newcomb with Torchy's Tacos, and Lori Murphy with the Williamson County and Cities Health District. My name is Lauren Sellers. I'm with the Round Rock Chamber, and we have some great content for you today. Before we dive into that, I'd like to cover a couple housekeeping items. So you'll notice that you are all muted and you'll remain muted throughout the program. If you have any questions or need any um, assistance with any of the, the Zoom features, please use that Q&A box, which is gonna be located at the bottom of your screen. And um, we'll have designated time at the end to answer questions from our panelists. So as you have questions come up, please type those into the Q&A box and um, we'll, we'll get to those at the end. We are recording today's webinar, so we will share the recording after the event today. And um, we are so grateful for our sponsor. You'll see their logo at the bottom of the screen, Fast Signs of Round Rock. They made this event possible today along with our amazing panelists. So I will hand it over to Jason Ball, the Chamber's President and CEO, to talk a little bit more about Fast Signs and to give them a quick introduction. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, good morning, everyone. We're, we're grateful to have you here uh, for the, the session today. We've, we've got several people logged in, and so I, uh, I'm excited for the dialogue that we're going to have. Um, sponsored today is Fast Signs Round Rock. Thank you for your support to make this uh, session possible. Um, uh, uh, they can. They want you to know they can handle all of your business visibility needs, from signs and graphics to decor and, and everything in between. Uh, a lot of folks will think of fast signs as a place for for yard signs and banners, which they love to do. Uh, but their their experience offers much much more uh, variability in the products you can get. They're really a visual marketing specialist. Uh, fast signs is able to provide. Exterior building signage, logo branded wall and conference room graphics, uh, uh, ADA Americans with Disability Act uh, compliant braille signs, uh, dimensional letters and logos for your office and much more. And so uh, to help us understand all of that product offering and their capabilities, I want to invite uh, John Bradley to tell us just a little bit more about Fast Signs Round Rock. John, are you, you on? There you are. Here I am. Uh, Jason, thanks so much. Uh, once again, my name is John Bradley. I work with Fast Signs here in Round Rock. Um, we kind of jokingly refer to ourselves uh, in the office as sign geeks. We know a lot about signage, more so than anybody really should, um, from the type of color that would evoke confidence to a financial institution to uh, what size letter needs to be on a sign that's 30 feet from a road that has traffic traveling at 45 miles an hour, what size letters do we need to make? So we know everything about signs. Um, high level, there's uh, three types of signs. All signage fits into one of these three categories. Uh, there's informational signage, directional signage, and promotional signage. And examples uh, for the hospitality industry, for example, when reopening of informational signage might be a now open or our dining room is now open uh if we put a banner up like that on the outside of a building to inform customers that they can come and uh sit down and have a uh, uh meal inside instead of having to pick it up uh, directional signage examples might be uh the floor graphics that you see in a store that direct you to stand in a certain area to promote social distancing or they have uh, designated entrance and exit signs uh, to get customer flow the way that they need to uh, to maintain uh, healthy uh, uh, spacing between customers. And then the third option, once again, is uh, promotional signage. Uh, we're really big about this in maintaining a brand consistency with, uh, with your companies. Uh, that might include um, including logos on your signage, using the colors uh, of your brand uh, in your signage or the same types of fonts uh, to develop signs that would match the, the look of your, your company. Um, for the hospitality industry, when we're talking about reopening, uh, there's a lot of different sign options that we can provide. Uh, examples real quickly uh, might be some door graphics that you would be able to um, let people know that a mask is required to enter an establishment. Uh, decals that we can put on surfaces or on walls 
uh, areas of a business that would uh, identify that this area has been sanitized or is sanitized daily or, or every uh, four hours to uh, promote safety. Uh, there's A-frame signs, which we can set up uh, in a temporary environment, which we're kind of in, to direct people to uh, certain locations. Or in medical establishments, for example, we'll have a lot of uh, requirements to check customers' temperatures before they enter a building, and we put up an A-frame sign to have uh, a patient call in and have a nurse come out and do a temperature check, for example. Uh, banners uh, can be used, uh, like we mentioned, to promote uh, opening of dining rooms or in the restaurant industries, uh, directing people to certain parking spaces to pick up uh, orders and that type of thing. Another thing we've been doing a lot of is curb uh, decals to identify parking spots for retail businesses for people to come and uh, uh, pick up items that they've ordered and they don't have to come into the store, but there's designated parking for that. Uh, those are just some high level examples. Uh, in the sign industry, we, we use a lot of acrylic in the signs we build. And I want to bring this up because acrylic's been being used, uh, referred to as plexiglass in some cases, uh, to provide that social distance barriers around uh, registers and that type of thing for uh, customers uh, and employees. Uh, we do a lot of acrylic work, so we can help with uh, putting up that uh, acrylic barrier around a, uh, around a uh, uh, cash register area, for example. Uh, just a quick heads up for you. Nationally, there is a large acrylic shortage at this time. So the availability of that acrylic barrier is becoming uh, more difficult to, uh, to secure. So keep that in mind when you're looking at that as an option for your business. Um, uh, overall, that's just a quick uh, review of what uh, Fast Signs might be able to offer uh, when uh, trying to reopen your business. Uh, so my name is John Bradley. Once again, feel free to reach out if you do have any questions. I'd be happy to help you out. John, thanks, thanks so, th thank you so much. Uh, I, I got to say, I love that tagline. We know more about signs than anyone really should. Yeah. Uh, if that doesn't inspire confidence in you and your team, I don't know what will. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for being here and making the program possible today. Um, so a couple things. Well, as we get into the program, uh, for anyone that does have questions, this has worked real well for us in the past. Uh, you can ask a question at any time. We are uh, moving those to the, the end portion of the program where we'll do Q&A with the entire panel. And so as you think of it, just pull up that Q&A panel down in the bottom center of your screen under uh, uh, Q&A with the little uh, talking icons and you can type it in there. Uh, Lauren is, is watching those throughout the program and we'll, we'll make sure to include those in the dialogue at, at the end of the program. Um, so our first uh, panelist today we're extremely excited about is Brianna Fisher. Brianna is the Assistant Regional Director of Sales for Residents in by Marriott, uh, Round Rock Del Way with Ambridge Hospitality. Uh, she actually represents seven hotels, or, or, or uh, Ambridge Hospitality represents seven hotels in the Round Rock and North Austin area. So she's an expert in what's going on in this community uh, right now. Uh, we're thrilled to have her with us today. Uh, and then she's going to share about Ambridge's uh, comprehensive safety plan that they've enacted to create a safe environment for their guests and staff. Brianna, thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're excited to hear about your plan today. Thank you, Jason. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Let me just share my screen and the presentation. Okay. Perfect. Thanks again, Jason. I really appreciate you um, introducing me. And um, thank you to the Round Rock Chamber for hosting today. We're really excited to let you know about our new program that we've rolled out across our company. Our company is Ambridge Hospitality. We're a leading global hotel management firm with over 14 hotels, 1,400 hotels across the world. We manage three hotels specifically in the Round Rock area, in addition to the seven that I oversee. Um, specifically, I oversee the Residence Inn by Marriott on Del Way there uh, in Round Rock. Today, I'll be presenting to you Ambridge's new proprietary cleaning program, AIM Clean. AIM Clean is redefining cleaning and safety in the post-COVID environment for our hotels. Like most of you, we knew that our world has changed, and we as people and hotel leaders have to change our practices in response to the new challenges that this virus brings. Our goal was to provide the tools and the resources to ensure that our teams are prepared for the rebound, as well as keep our staff and our guests safe. 
Ambridge met with the chemical expert Ecolab and we collaborated with our brand partners to create a new system that's rooted in the CDC guidelines. The training program is an hour long and it takes our employees through a three part webinar series focused on education, products, and procedures. Once complete, the employee will be AIM Clean certified. Our expectation is that every employee will complete this training as it affects us all personally and professionally. The first webinar in the series begins with educating our team members on the virus itself. It details how it spreads and how to reduce the risks that are involved with it. Secondly, our team learned how to protect the people around us. To protect their families and our guests alike, our associates will practice the common methods of prevention, which include avoiding close contact within six feet. And I know for me personally, as a veteran in the hospitality industry, this will be a challenge. Today, uh, saying hello from a safe six feet away will be a challenge for us all because we are in this together. We're recommending a friendly wave to replace our customary greetings of a handshake or a hug. We're also encouraging our associates to stay home if they're sick or feeling ill, as well as our employees at the beginning of each of their shifts are self-checking their temperatures before starting their day. It's also, to remind our, it's also important to remind our associates how important it is to wash their hands thoroughly and to use hand sanitizer frequently. Lastly, the first webinar focuses on how we can keep ourselves safe from the virus. We educated our team on the importance of healthy habits like getting enough sleep, eating a balanced diet, and exercising to boost their immune systems. In regards to face coverings, our hotels are following local and state guidelines, but Ambridge is encouraging our teams to wear masks to prevent further spread and to rebuild consumer confidence. We will follow OSHA guidelines with additional personal protective equipment when it's relative to their job duty. For example, housekeeping attendants will wear hand protection, eye protection, masks, and gloves. Our associates need to return to work with the feeling that we've done everything in our power to protect them. We've challenged our leaders at the property to make a detailed list of the back of house areas to clean that may be overlooked. Some things to consider adding to the list are mop handles, sinks, clipboards, caddies, laundry chutes, inside closet door handles, associate lockers, and time clocks. In the second webinar, we focused on the products. Ambridge partnered with Ecolab to understand the challenges with all the various products out there on the market. In our new normal, we have to select the right product, the right tools, and the right application methods. The importance of contact time to achieve disinfection is really key, as well as increasing the frequency of our cleaning. There are three types of cleaners to consider. A general cleaner to remove soil from the surface, but it does not kill any organisms. A sanitizer, which reduces bacteria, but it does not eliminate all the bacteria. And lastly, a disinfectant, which destroys or irreversibly inactivates any bacteria and viruses. Our housekeeping program with chemicals is very simple. To deliver clean and healthy guest rooms, we will use two items to clean and disinfect and one item to freshen. Ambridge shows a peroxide multi-surface cleaner and disinfectant and a scrub-free bathroom cleaner and disinfectant. Both of these products are approved by the EPA to use against COVID-19. Third, Ambridge chose an air freshener. We did not want to forget that we're in the hospitality industry and we don't want to lose sight of the guest experience. So to ensure a pleasant odor, we're, we'll, we will continue to use a room freshener throughout the hotel. There, sorry about that. There are two methods of application. We have a trigger spray bottle with a manual trigger that will spray a coarse application of product to the surface. And then there's also a pressure sprayer that utilizes a pressurized tank to distribute a continuous spray to cover the entire surface. As of right now, Ambridge is utilizing the trigger spray application. We're not recommending the pressure sprayer as we're waiting for final EPA approval. A couple of positives for the trigger spray is that it's more cost effective and we're already very experienced in the application. It just takes a little bit more time to go around the room and make sure that we're correctly spraying it versus a pressure sprayer. The time it takes for the product to disinfect is extremely important in our new procedures. For non-porous surfaces, we will pre-clean the area, 
spray the disinfectant, and then wait the appropriate amount of time for the disinfectant to eliminate bacteria. Lastly, we will dry the surface. To ensure that proper order is carried out, each room attendant will be utilizing a new enhanced checklist. During our daily stand-up meetings, we'll emphasize our role in the aim cleaning process with continued training and consistent reinforcement. At Ambridge, our back of house environment is just as important as our front of house. We want our teams to feel safe and comfortable coming into work, knowing that their work areas have been disinfected appropriately. At the beginning of each day, our AIM clean leaders will ensure that their team's work surfaces are clean and ready for our staff. Disinfecting clipboards, housekeeping cards, and key cards are all part of our new daily routine. In addition, our housekeeping cards will be an area of focus for our team, ensuring that we do not cross-contaminate clean linen and supplies. When it comes to occupied guest rooms, we will not be cleaning stayovers less than five nights to protect our guests and our staff. And in most cases, our guests do not want service and they appreciate us refraining from entering our room. We will, however, clean a stay over room if a guest or a group has arranged it ahead of time with the general manager or if the long-term guest staying five nights or more. Our guests can borrow cleaning items at any time um, should they wish during their stay. When we do enter the room, however, our teams must wait three hours after the guest has departed to add an extra layer of protection for our team. While we do not want to interrupt our attendants' usual sequence of cleaning, we did change the first two steps to allow chemical to have enough time to just effectively destroy the bacteria. First, our attendants will clear the bathroom, remove any terry, spray the bathroom cleaner and disinfectant on all the surfaces, and let it sit for five minutes. Second, our attendants will then go into the bedroom, clear the area, and strip the bedding. They will use a peroxide cleaner and disinfectant to spray all the surfaces and let that sit for two minutes. Then the room attendant is free to go back to their usual sequence of cleaning. During the cleaning process, our team will pull all linen and towels from the room to ensure that all items are fresh and sanitized. Our teams have also removed any items that are not necessary in the guest rooms to reduce the extra touch point items, such as pens, notepads, decorations, and hotel directories. We have also retrained our house person or the front of house attendant. This person will be cleaning all high touch items in our public space. Areas like elevator buttons, ice machines, public space furniture, and our business and our fitness centers. At our hotels, our fitness centers are open in accordance with local guidance. Our teams will step up their cleaning to every 30 minutes during peak time and every one to two hours during non-peak time. Some fitness centers are restricted to a certain occupancy based on size. Our larger fitness centers must ensure that machines are six feet apart or restrict every other machine to provide spacing between the guests. In addition, our fitness centers will have cleaning product and supplies available for the guest use. We're posting signs throughout the center to remind our guests to distance and to practice prevention while working out. Ambridge has also rolled out a very detailed plan for hotels that offer shuttle transportation. Our drivers will be cleaning their vehicles before and after each trip, and we're ensuring that guests are distancing during the ride. We'll also be providing sanitizer and cleaning wipes for the guest use. When an in-house guest requests new supplies or towels, our teams will be able to deliver those items directly to the guest, provided that they adhere to the following procedures. Items will be placed outside the guest room door, and a laundry valet bag for contactless delivery. Our employees will wear PPE when delivering and handling clean linen at all times. We will maintain distancing when talking to the guests, and we will also follow up via telephone to ensure their satisfaction. During the laundry process, our team will wear PPE. When team members are collecting used linen, they will wear gloves and refresh their gloves in between adding and removing laundry from the bins. When they sort the laundry, when they fill the machines, and when folding clean laundry. Throughout the day, we will disinfect laundry bins in our laundry rooms to ensure all are clean and disinfected. We wash our laundry with high temperatures and with chemical to disinfect and clean, and folded linen will now be stored in low traffic areas to limit exposure. Upon completion of the training program, our employees will be AIM Clean certified. 
This may seem excessive now, but this will all be part of our new normal. From the moment our guests arrive at our properties, they've always had an expectation of outstanding cleanliness. Today and for the years to come, our guests will look for more and they want reassurance of disinfection and safety. Being clean is not good enough. Our hotels will be aimed clean. Thank you for your time today. Should you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly via email or telephone. Thank you. Brianna, thank you so much. Wow, that was, uh, I, I think the only word I have for that is comprehensive. Uh, you guys have really, uh, uh, you know, gone through that cleaning process and really thought it through and I'll, I'll, I'll share with the group. That's a theme we have seen, uh, whether it's an office environment or a retail environment or uh, now hospitality environment. Um, I think every business is, is walking through, you know, what, what do we need to, to pick apart here process-wise to ensure that both our team members and our guests and customers and clients are going to feel safe in this environment. So that was great. Thank you. I um, want to remind uh, the group uh, listening, if you do have uh, questions, please type those in the chat box. Again, Lauren is uh, watching that, or I'm sorry, not the chat box, the Q&A box. Uh, Lauren's watching that, and uh, we will make sure that those are included in the, uh, in the program here at the end. Uh, but before we get to that, I uh, want to shift gears here just a little bit uh, to one of my favorite restaurants in town. Uh, being the new guy here, this is a fun one to have uh, part of our program. Um, Damien Newcomb. Damien is the Austin Market Partner for Torchy's Tacos. Damien has been the in the hospitality industry for 20 plus years. Damien is a, a graduate of the Cordon Bleu Culinary School and has been with Torchy's for seven years. Torchy's Tacos immediately jumped into a comprehensive plan when the COVID-19 uh, uh, virus hit. And uh, Damien's going to share with us today how they have adapted their operations and how they are reopening safely. Damon, I'll turn it over to you. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to speak to you guys about uh, reopening stores uh, quickly. Uh, they really had a plan for. Um, there were precedent. Uh, there's no playbook to it. Uh, you know, everybody was going day by day at times um, and as the team moved um, and got some information uh, information on the pandemic um, we, we took CDC look on what was transpiring you know in the world and pretty much changed the course of the Information that we were we were providing. Uh, we had uh, you know webinars just like this with our operations leadership team. Uh, a couple times. Damien, this, uh, this is Jason. I'm going to jump in real, real quick here. Uh, uh, for, for some reason, I'm sorry, we're, we're really having trouble with uh, your, your audio, and, and I apologize to our audience for that. Uh, um, uh, things, things have been working uh, fine up until now. So um, I just got a comment from a couple people that are, are cutting out. Uh, and let's see, Lauren, uh, Lauren is asking uh, Damien a few uh, are able to perhaps if you could uh, uh, call in rather than using the the online uh, uh, access point that might be helpful and and I really uh, and then uh, uh, Lauren has just posted that number it's three four six two four eight seven seven nine nine thank you Lauren um, so Damien maybe if you're able to to try to, to call in so we can ensure that uh, everyone is able to to hear your presentation we want to I, I did just take out my earbuds. Does that change anything? That is significantly better, I think. Okay, awesome. Sorry awesome. about that. Thank guys. you. Um, Lauren, if you could advance slide. Um, and then one more. 
Um, so on 319, you know, the initial adjustment for operations was we all had to close our dining rooms um, of our stores. Um, you know, it was something that was different for us. Um, with that, we had to transition 100% to off-premise operation. Um, with the closing of dining rooms, we took the opportunity to deep clean and sanitize our stores. Um, while there wasn't anybody in the building, we really took everything apart um, and really got really deep into some, some heavy-duty cleaning. Um, you know, we began monitoring our staff and making sure that they were fit and healthy for work. Uh, we took into con consideration their concerns and fears with the situation that was kind of transpiring around the world as well. And if they felt uncomfortable with being at work, we didn't press the issue. Um, you know, they were placed on a furlough until they were ready to come back to work with us. Um, you know, and that was pretty awesome for them to, to know that they still had a job on the other side of this. Um, we, we implemented a limited menu when we closed our dining room so that way we could become more efficient um, and smooth out our operations and minimize waste. Uh, contactless curbside pickup was set up. Um, some of the locations even ran their POS registers out to the curbside and basically created a drive-through system. Um, you know, online phone orders were ran out to cars and placed in the back seat for the guests. Uh, we took card payments over the phone or online orders as much as we could to minimize any kind of contact with with anything. Uh, we implemented wireless tablet payment uh, capabilities. They were set up at all locations you know, within a week or two of, of everything going going down. Uh, DoorDash is Torchy's main partner. Uh, we fully integrated our POS, POS system with them. We worked with uh, free delivery with them as well. Um, so that's how we kind of stayed in contact with you know, our customers and having delivery you know, to their home where it was just drop off. Um, we also adjusted and uh, took on board Favor, Grubhub, and Uber Eats as well. Um, you know, and then it came to you know, 515, the reopening of dining rooms. Uh, if you can advance the slide one more. Um, so reopening safely, uh, the re when the restrictions were lifted, our dining rooms were allowed to open, um, but at a limited capacity. So prior to this, our operations team came together and we wrote and set up a pretty comprehensive reopening playbook. Um, the internal guide was about 90 pages long, um, covered everything from cleaning the entire store prior to reopening, resetting all of our technology that may have been moved, um, how to clean out a soda machine um, and reconnect it after a shutdown, um, employee health screening, uh, social distancing requirements that we were going to be undertaking, uh, team member and guest protection. Uh, we rethought out dining rooms and we used state guidelines and removed or marked off tables that were not able to be used. Um, my garage is full of tables and chairs right now. Um, this, this is keeping everybody at the six feet um, separation. Um, our patio tables were also spread out to allow more separation for people. Uh, we currently have the same level of tables um, as we did when we first opened at 25%, 50%. Um, you know, the size of our dining rooms doesn't really allow us to add tables back until that six feet uh, distancing is lifted. So this will be the new normal for, for quite some time on, on our table, table spacing. Um, we've really kind of everything for dine-in versus takeout is definitely leaning more towards takeout. So that's kind of the area that we're really trying to focus on and you know, master and make sure that we're we're doing what we need to do with that takeout and you know how people are going to come into the store to pick up their orders for takeout. Um, some stores set up to go pickup areas that were set up separate from the normal kind of dining area so that way it was just a kind of an in and out thing and they didn't have to interact with too much of what was going on in the store if they did decide to um, continue to, to come into the store to pick up their order we set up the curbside so that way they can just text in and let us know that they're there and we'll run it out to their car place it in the back seat so that way there's contactless uh, and for, uh, things going on there uh, our queue lines were spaced out. We have uh, tape on the floor so that way people know what the six feet distancing is. Um, we have a box at our beverage station that indicates only one person only um, while, while getting their beverage. 
Um, along with that, we have a sign at the beverage station that requests that they come and get another cup if they're going to get a refill. So they can only basically use single use um, containers. All of the utensils and things that people would be normally kind of touching over at the bed station or grabbing themselves so can place behind the register so that way the cashiers will hand them a fork or a knife or a spoon if they need it. Um, our tea and our coffee was also placed behind the register so that way it eliminates a little bit of contact um, that guests have with handles um, and those kind of things. Um, these measures measures basically just um, continue to kind of reduce the guest contact with common surfaces and space out their contact with each other so that way, you know, they, they feel comfortable and safe being in the dining room um, around, you know, everybody else and knowing that they're not, you know, touching a lot of things after somebody else has been touching a lot of things. Um, cleaning and uh, sanitizing is definitely second nature. Um, it's something that we, you know, have meetings every day about. You know, what are we going to be cleaning today? We have a cleaning calendar set up in our internal portal, um, so that gets printed every day. And there's specific things that get done daily, um, and then there's specific things that each day gets cleaned, you know, a little bit deeper than it would normally. Um, within my market of North Austin, we've invested in a partnership with EnviroMaster. Um, this company comes in weekly and does a deep clean and sanitation of our restrooms. Um, we've also had them do a full sanitation of our dining rooms weekly uh, with their food safe viral, uh, uh, virus vaporizer sanitation, um, proven to kill uh, COVID-19, influenza, norovirus, and 40 other uh, bacteria, virus um, causing diseases. Um, all areas of the restaurant are set up on a cleaning calendar, so at least you know, we know that everything is going to be touched, um, at least either it's going to be daily or, uh, you know, every every couple of hours. Um, we use sanitize, uh, uh, peroxide cleaner on all surfaces, um, you know, so that way it, it does kill uh, the viruses. Um, our bussers are constantly walking around, um, touching on surfaces and cleaning those areas that, uh, you know, guests may be touching. Railings along the queue line, door handles, um, tables, napkin dispensers. As soon as every guest leaves, um, there's going to be somebody over there cleaning the table within a, within you know less than a minute or so. Um, all of our front of house cashiers, bartenders are also trained to do that. So if they see somebody get up, they're going to run over there, um, take care of that table, sanitize it. Um, we have uh, table cards that say table is available. This table has been carefully cleaned and sanitized for your protection. Um, so those are put on the tables that have been cleaned and sanitized. We also have uh, another one that identifies them that that table is uh, not to be used. Um, team member and guest protection is definitely our highest priority. We screen our staff daily. Um, we've had training with the team on when they feel ill that they cannot come to work. Um, all team members in contact with our guests are required to wear masks and gloves. Um, we've provided our team members with masks, um, but they're also allowed to uh, wear their uh, masks that they may have made at home to show their individuality, um, whether it be you know sugar skulls or flames on them or something like that, which is uh, kind of cool to keep with our brand. Uh, we've installed the plexi barriers at each POS uh, terminal. Um, sanitizer stations uh, are in our queue lines. Sanitizer is definitely hard to come by, but as soon as we get it, we buy it in bulk for the entire company, so that way everybody gets a little piece of it. Um, our marketing and technology team have, def uh, have set up a touchless QR code. You can see that on the right there. So if you scan that with your phone, it will bring up our menu, so that way we don't actually have to have handheld menus any longer. Um, our large menu is up behind the POS counter as well, so um, menus being held in hand uh, isn't really a thing anymore. Um, you know, we have our commitment to our guests to make sure that, uh, you know, touchless and curbside and, you know, where they don't really have to come in, all they have to do is come in, um, you know, get what they want and, and take off or, you know, if they want to sit down, they're going to sit down in a safe, sanitized, healthy environment. Um, so 
part of uh, you know staying viable to you know who we are as a brand and during all of this, we've definitely changed how we've done things. So we have uh, created family packs to you know offer to families at home, so that way they don't have to come in. Um, it's bulk items. We did have party packs, which were a lot larger. But uh, as soon as uh, the COVID-19 hit, we, we kind of eliminated, uh, one didn't eliminate it, but uh, reduced it down to a more family-friendly kind of, you know, package deal. Um, you know, the, the curbside, we took the alcohol from the bars and we created uh, you know, margarita kits to go, mimosa kits to go, beer and those kind of things um, also available to go. Um, you know, staying viable by implementing, you know, those kind of things um, within the neighborhood was, was something that, that we were really striving to do. Um, each store began doing neighborhood drops for family packs. Um, we would go to a neighborhood and set up our van, we would take orders uh, prior, you know, a week prior, and then we'd come in and just hand out bags of um, these family packs to the neighborhoods, would park up at their, their pool, and they would just drive by and would would drop it in their back seat. So that was kind of awesome when everybody was on, you know, the full lockdown, uh, that they could still get something that was a little different and didn't have to cook for their family. Um, you know, I know we're far from the end of this and we all need to keep being uh, vigilant with what we're doing to keep our teams and our guests safe. Um, I appreciate how open our teams are to the changes. Um, you know, we change things and we implement new, new safety precautions or procedures and our team members really grab hold of it um, you know and they really enjoy kind of the learning process of you know how are we going to keep safe how are we going to keep our customers safe you know I'm thankful for our guests that are returning and joining uh, us to enjoy some damn good tacos and a damn safe environment you know and I thank you guys for including us in this, in this presentation so thank you very much for, for letting us be here um, I appreciate it Damien, thank you. Uh, again, that was great and comprehensive. And, and I will tell you, that's been one of the, the things that, um, you know, continues to, to be just one of those little reminders of how the, some of this stuff is going to be with us for a while is, is the, the QR code uh, menus um, is something that I just, uh, uh, you know, I think it's, it was kind of fun at first. And now it's just interesting to see how ubiquitous that has become in, in your industry. Um, all right, so we're going to keep things uh, moving along here. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, Lori Murphy uh, with us today. Um, and, and again, uh, I really hope the folks that uh, are, are in the audience will, will use uh, her as a resource as well as our other two uh, panelists today. Uh, Lori is with the, the Williamson County and City uh, Cities and Health District. Boy, I struggle to say that uh, string every single time. I'm sorry. Um, They've been hard at work uh, uh, connecting with businesses for the past uh, a few months in particular um, and providing resources and guidance. Uh, I can tell you our office has been reaching out to them about our own uh, activities. I know several other businesses uh, have been as well. Lori is the uh, director of their environmental health uh, group and, uh, and she's on the line today to share some of the resources that they can, they can apply to help you get back to work. So uh, Lori, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to those two presentations. I was very Lori, Lori I'm sorry. I'm going to jump in and just to, uh, check. I think we might be having some audio challenges on your end now, too. Uh, really echoey uh, to begin with. Uh, someone hit me up on the chat or the Q&A. Is, is that coming across for everybody all right? Is this any better? Same thing. Let's see. Um, let me know if things are getting any better. I'm going to uh, adjust my audio. Sorry that you all have to look at this. Uh, did that help anything? No, someone's, uh, uh, Dix uh, suggested it might be audio over modulation, which is not a word I can even define right now. So I'm going to trust, them, but it still sounds fuzzy. 
tell, tell you what, let's, let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a quick audible, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, Lori, if you don't mind calling in. Uh, on, on your phone line separately, you can mute your com computer uh, and, uh, and you can use that phone line and, and keep your video feed up. And Lauren's already posted that, so that's in the, in the chat. Um, and uh, just uh, while, you're, while you're getting that taken care of, I think I'm, I, I would like to just open up a question for uh, both Damien and uh, Brianna, if, if I can. And that was, uh, you know, I've been really wondering, obviously both of your uh, groups have taken extensive uh, preparations to, uh, you know, provide safety to your staff and assurance to your, your customers. Um, I know part of what we're learning from several businesses right now about uh, as the, the economy comes back is uh, workforce, either being able to return or, or, or want to come back. So I, I, uh, Brianna or, and or Damien, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on uh, have, have these safety protocols that you have provided to your teams, are they, are they feeling comfortable to come back or has that been a, a bit of a coaching process for, for either of you as you, you go forward into this? Um, we definitely had people that have decided not to come back. Um, you know, you know, preferred that they didn't, you know, it may, whether it be that they're caring for an older loved one or just, a, a you know, their own kind of health, health aspect. Um, there's a few of those that have decided, no, I don't want to come back. Um, you know, other people we've offered, uh, for them to return and, you know, they've been happy about it. Um, it's just a coaching thing once they get back in the building that these are the new precautions that, you know, were different before you left as opposed to the ones that were here continuously throughout it. Um, with the interview process, we've been seeing that people are coming in wearing masks and wearing their own sets of gloves. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of nice to see that they're the ones that are actually thinking about, you know, what's going on. Um, my personal preference, if I see somebody that comes into an interview without a mask on, I'm probably maybe going to think twice. Um, you know, I understand that people feel that, you know, this may be gone just because restrictions are lifted, but it is definitely not gone. Yeah. That's great. Bri Brianna, what, uh, what's your thoughts on that? We have a lot of the same um, issues. Our employees are concerned. Um, coming back, especially our housekeepers, um, you know, the jobs that they do um, being in guest rooms are really up close and personal with some of our guests. Um, so they really appreciate the time and the training that they have um, gone through. And yep. um, they, they appreciate the, the rest of the team and the managers leading by example. Um, we're really fortunate that our housekeeping and our, and our front desk staff are wanting to come back. Many of them are um, veterans and, and longtime employees of our hotel company. So um, I know, you know, as, as for us in the sales team, we've been working the front desk and um, it's a different environment in the early days um, of COVID. So we're excited to have our team members and our family back at the hotels with us. Um, everybody's ready to get back to business, um, but we are taking it very seriously. And, um, you know, we want to ensure that our guests know that we are taking it seriously as well. Yeah, well, I, I think that's a credit to both your business models to, uh, you know, communicate that so clearly, both through uh, policy and through how you live it out. So uh, thank you for being that example for us. Let's, uh, it looks like we've got Lori on yep. the phone. We'll, we'll try that. Lori, can you hear us? Uh, and we'll do a quick I sound can, check. I can hear you guys just fine. How, are, how am I coming through? That's great. Yay! You are all set. I'm gonna I'm gonna bow out now and give it back to you, Lori. Outstanding. Thank you guys so much. And um, and yeah, what I was uh, saying earlier was before I get started, I just want a quick shout out to how awesome um, it looks like Ambridge and both Torchies did on their responses. Um, they really took it seriously. They really looked out for their employees and for their guests. And, um, and, you know, Ambridge, like, they weren't just looking at the front counter. They were looking at the valet service and the transportation, too. So I'm, I'm highly impressed and I'm, I'm very proud of both of those companies. And I'm impressed with all of you guys for coming in and listening to this and sitting with us. Um, I am the director over the environmental health 
uh, at Williamson County and Cities Health District. Uh, we have a brand new email address, so if you've ever tried to email us before, and it was a very long one, we now have a short, easy uh, eh at wilco.org. Um, we also have, because of COVID, a brand new inspector hotline. So during business hours, you can call our new hotline, which is 512-248-7600, uh, and that will go um, either directly to uh, one of our health inspectors or it will go to voicemail and then that health inspector will give you a call back as soon as they're off the line. Um, so we are very excited to, to offer that. Um, I just wanted to show you guys, uh, this is everywhere that Williamson County and City's Health District is responsible for helping. Um, so we do cover the entire uh, county um, and then especially, you know, right here in the heart of it, Round Rock. Uh, a quick introduction, um, the reason that we have, uh, we do all of these different places within Williamson County is in 2007, there was a cooperative agreement signed between all the governments uh, and our organization. Um, uh, we, my particular division is responsible for retail food. That's anytime we're offering food to the public, whether it's a temporary event or a restaurant or a hotel breakfast. Um, and just this last year, we uh, passed a pool order. So we're now responsible for permitting swimming pools, paws, uh, paws, paws, and splash pads. Um, so that is what my group does. Uh, and then I just kind of wanted to share real quick our organization chart, just to point out at the very top, our bosses are the people of Williamson County. That's who we respond to, and that's who we're, we're here for. Um, and those same people are you. So you are our bosses. You and your customers are the ones we're working for, and we're here to help you. So I just really want y'all to know that, that we have your best interests in heart, and we're not, you know, the, the boogeyman at the get you. We're here to make sure your customers are safe and healthy, our customers are safe and healthy, and we're all doing good together. Um, so that's environmental health. Just a quick, uh, you know, definition where the branch of public health concerns with all aspects of the natural and built environment that affect human health. So we're pretty broad based. Um, and, uh, but the number one thing we're known for doing is the food inspection. Um, and you can see kind of, you know, that it is profoundly local. Uh, yes, there are, you know, FDA inspected farms and manufacturers. But it's really the local, you know, when you're putting that food on the plate and handing it to the customer, that's where we're interacting and that's where we care. Um, so so we're, we're here for you. We want to prevent those foodborne illnesses. Um, they hurt your business. They hurt our customers. They, they're just not good. So that's what we're looking to, to prevent. Quick introduction on our team. So, uh, so there's myself. We have two customer service representatives, Becky and Sierra, and they're both wonderful at, at trying to get you the answer. If they can't find the answer, they will research it and get it to you. Um, we have several inspectors. Jovette Newton is our supervisor over the inspectors. And then uh, David and Rainey are our two most senior inspectors. Uh, then we have Lucy, Judy, and Zach, and uh, they all kind of take different areas. Um, throughout the county, but any one of them can work in any area. So depending on response needs, uh, any one of these guys could show up um, with uh, questions or just a routine inspection. If you guys worked with us on our pool program, getting that started, Vince Delisi might be a name that you're familiar with. Uh, he has often retired on us in mid-May, so uh, congratulations to him, and, um, and we are looking to fill his shoes soon. Uh, so what I want to, uh, you know, really enforce is that our team is your allies. Um, look to us for information, look to us for guidance, resources, um, and, you know, and complaints or things that we need to go and educate for, uh, folks on to help them do a better job, to help your customers, our customers. Um, just left to right, uh, that's Sierra, David, Jovette, and Rainey. Um, so, you know, primary uh, working together and partner concerns, that's what we're here for. And then I really want to share this slide. These are places that you can go to go and get information um, uh, on your own, but you're also welcome to call us and we will give you that information too. We try to keep our own web page up to date and that's what that top uh, link is there. 
Um, and I know all of this will be sent out through the recording. I'll also send this information in the email to Lauren and she can just uh, get that out to everybody as well, please. Um, so the top one is our website. The next one is the Texas Department of State Health Services. They have created these wonderful checklists, if you haven't seen them yet, that um, kind of guide you on what the minimum uh, health expectations and requirements are uh, in this new environment that we've gone and found ourselves in. There are a ton of checklists. There's easily 30 of them or so in there. Um, there's one that I just really kind of want to uh, point out to everybody to, to check out. Uh, let's get up in there. Woo -hoo. <laughs> so that one is the checklist for all employers and event organizers. It's the most generic overseeing um, uh, checklist that they have. They do have some that are specifically for uh, restaurants and uh, others for bars, things like that. So it's very helpful uh, bit of information. And then lastly, the Office of the Texas Governor, and that's where we're getting our schedules as to how we're reopening and the percentages. Uh, so right now we're at 50% uh, reopening capacity as long as you're maintaining six feet distance. Um, and Friday we're going up to 75%. Now one of the interesting things that I appreciate that the state has come up with for us is uh, a solution to, um, to the problem that uh, Damien mentioned for, uh, for Torchy, for example. And that is that we only have a limited amount of space in our dining room. Um, and so once you separate those tables out six feet, there's only so much, uh, you know, so many customers you can get in at a time. Well, um, what we uh, have, have developed and started creating uh, and allowing are barriers, just like we have up at our POS systems and uh, POS points. Um, if you put a, a six, six foot tall uh, barrier between the seating areas, um, you can actually sit people uh, closer together next to each other. Uh, an example that I would think of in my mind first is a row of booths. If you put up a, a plexiglass in between each of those and maybe along the line, uh, the back wall that uh, maybe enters up to a, a, a customer line or something like that, then um, you effectively um, isolated each one of those booths and now you can use everybody, um, every space. So that is just kind of a new development that uh, the state has, has suggested to us and, uh, and I think is very, very helpful, um, assuming we can get the acrylic, you know, that John was talking about. So good luck. Um, I hope that we're able to manage that. Um, this last slide is all the different ways you can contact us. Um, we want to be available to you. We want to be accessible. So uh, we have our brand new, easy to, to type in email address. Uh, we have our customer service line that's been going for since forever and is still going. We have our new inspector hotline. We do have an after hours emergency number. Uh, this is primarily for um, extreme emergencies like a fire in a restaurant or something where we need someone to respond immediately. Um, if it's just questions, we ask that you call the customer service or send us an email. Um, the reason being the person answering the after hours emergency is not one of our employees, so they won't have any answers for you. They're just a dispatcher and would be able to dispatch us out to, uh, to an emergency situation. Um, the, the biggest issues that we would have that we would want to come out to would be a fire in restaurants and or a, um, or a food area and or a, a sewage backup. So those are kind of our two biggest ones. Uh, most everything else can, um, can kind of wait till the next day. We do have a drop box now so that folks can uh, leave us applications, leave us uh, payments for permits, um, uh, even you know letters, anything that they want to. It's an outside accessible drop box. It's at our office in Round Rock at 355 Texas Avenue. Um, and that's accessible 24 seven. Uh, and then we do have lobby hours. Those are closed right now. Um, we are looking at getting that reopened, but at this point, uh, the county has not authorized the demobilization for, for us yet. So we're not open yet for lobby hours. Um, and then lastly, we have our, our web address, our email, our web, website. Um, and that's just simply wcchd.org. Uh, you can get on there, search around. We have all the different programs that we offer, including things like WIC and um, women, infants, and children, and uh, clinic, and immunization. So 
And so everything that we do all in that one spot. Um, and that is all that I have for you guys. I figured um, we could answer uh, questions as you have them. And, um, and you know, if not, you have our contacts. So if you think of something as soon as this is over, then uh, we will all uh, work together. So thank you guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Lori. And as Lori mentioned, we will share the recording and we will share those slides as well so that you all have those resources at hand. So at this time, we are going to open it up for questions. Thank you. We have a couple that have come through already. So thank you for submitting those. Um, please type those in the Q&A box, which is located at the bottom of your screen. And um, I'll go ahead and ask for, for our panelists to, um, if you don't mind coming back online um, with your video and audio, and um, we'll kick off our Q&A session. So I'd like to start with a question, a question that is geared towards Brianna and, and Damien. So you both talked a lot about how you've had to pivot during COVID-19 and you've implemented some new and creative methods. Um, Damien, you talked about your curbside that you're doing, your, your margarita kits, which I know everyone loves, your family style meals that you have. So I'm, I'm curious, um, do you think that these processes will, will stick and become long-term? And can you kind of talk about what you foresee your new normal looking like? Um, with curbside, I feel that that will stick around for quite some time. Um, it's definitely a convenience factor. Um, our guests really like that they can just pull in and say that they're here and their food just arrives to their car. Um, with the, I guess, the uh, margarita kits and those kind of things, um, that's kind of up to the TABC laws, but as long as they've got those available, we're definitely going to be selling those. Um, I think that's also a cool convenience factor that people you know, they can come in, they can pick up a meal for their family, and then they can get a couple of drinks as well. And it's, you know, it's the Torchy's standard, so it has the Torchy's sweet and sour mix. So they know they're getting, you know, basically our product, but they just make it at their house. You know, they can make it as strong or as weak as they like it. Thank you, Damien. Um, Brianna, so you talked a lot about your, your new sanitization cleaning methods, and, um, and I know that y'all have had to pivot a lot as well. Can, can you talk a little bit about what you foresee the new normal looking like and if you think these methods will stick around long term? Sure, I think, um, you know, the cleanliness and the sanitation and extra steps um, will probably be part of our, our new daily life in the hotels. Um, I do feel like with our food and beverage options, that's something that the brands are still figuring out what that's going to look like. You know, most hotels um, had some type of buffet where the guests serve themselves. Um, I think that's probably not going to come back. It may be um, a, a revised version of that. It might be where everything's wrapped um, and the guests can help themselves or we have an attendant that um, will serve them. Um, but, you know, at the heart of hospitality in, in, in both restaurants and hotels is a sense of community. So I know that all of us are looking to get back to that um, communal type environment. Um, it's just a matter of we, how things are gonna shake out regarding the virus and um, what the brands are gonna be rolling out as far as some of those items. But I feel like other areas are kind of resuming back to normal in our, in our hotels. And then Brianna, I have another question for you that came in from Ben. So Ben says that they stay at the residence in, in Waco and they're planning to stay there um, in the next couple weeks. And they're happy to know that um, y'all are prepared to keep customers safe. So Ben's question is, is um, this process followed by all residents in across Texas? Well, thanks Ben. I actually am from Waco and I know that residence in very well. It's actually part of our Ambridge hospitality management family. So um, that particular hotel, on University Parks um, will be um, following the AIM Clean. If it's a different um, brand or if it's not a hotel that is in our portfolio or in our management company, there's a lot of our practices overlap what the brands are doing. So 
For example, if um, something that the brands, whether it be a Marriott, a Hilton, an IHG, or other hotel brands out there, they're all rolling out their own system. Ours is particular to our management company, Ambridge, but again, there is that overlap. And so if there's something that the brands say, for example, Marriott is asking, then our hotels will do that as well. Um, for example, one thing that each of the brands are doing um, that I, I did not mention was that we are putting a sticker or a seal on the guest room doors after they're clean to let the guests know that nobody's been in their room since that room's been sanitized and, and cleaned. Um, and each brand has their own sticker, their own um, specific thing that they're doing. And so you'll see that across all the hotels for the major brands that they're all doing something similar, maybe just a little bit different and specific to their particular brand. That's great. And I saw Lori give the thumbs up. So seal of approval. Um, thank you, Brianna. So um, Lori, this next question is, is for you. Um, can, can you touch on protocol for what a restaurant or hotel should be doing if they find out that a, an employee or a guest has tested positive for COVID and has recently been in? Excellent. That's, that's a wonderful question um, and that, uh, that has happened. Um, first of all, the, uh, the employee or the, um, the guest, you know, uh, we have had, a, back up two seconds, we had an occasion way at the beginning where a, a guest came in, um, it, this was during the, the heavy lockdown at the beginning, and, uh, and they ordered their food to go, they picked it up, and as they left, they said, oh, by the way, I'm COVID-19 positive, go ahead and sanitize everything as I leave. So that restaurant was amazing. They called us immediately, um, and uh, and before they even called us, they went ahead and, and temporarily shut the door. Uh, we talked to them about the sanitizing methods uh, and the disinfectants that were approved by EPA. Uh, we found out that they were already using something that was approved. Uh, so we just had them, you know, wipe down every surface that that uh, person came in contact with. Um, we let them uh, uh, the uh, person who was interacting with them. Luckily had on their masks and their gloves, so we just asked them to go ahead and take that off, put on a fresh mask, uh, take off the gloves, you know, wash your hands, put on fresh gloves, um, and uh, and then at that point we felt that they were acceptable to reopen. Um, they had taken care of all the steps that we needed right then and there. Uh, so that is what we would want to see happen. Um, basically just, you know, a thorough deep cleaning, um, and I think within if I remember right, I think that they were back reopened within 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, it did not take them that long to respond to, to that. And most of that was on the phone with us as we were working through. So with a little pre-planning, they could have easily gotten through that much faster. Um, so that would be our, our primary um, uh, go-to method. Um, if an employee is sick, we actually kind of have different uh, levels of how we would want to respond. We have um, epidemiologists, which are basically disease detectives, and they would actually uh, talk to that person who, who was uh, the employee who was seen as being positive. They would talk to them as soon as they found out that it was a positive case. They would start discussing where their interactions were um, and then give them instructions on what to have happen next. They would get contact information for their place of business. And so based on kind of the time schedule, how long that employee was there, how many hours they had worked, um, the epidemiologist would kind of have different, uh, different advice for them. So that one is definitely kind of handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, but really disinfection and, um, and uh, putting on those, those fresh gloves and, and doing the hand washing in between, um, is, is what we're looking for. Uh, we can't control all risk, but we can mitigate the risk that we, we do know of and that we can see. Thank you, Lori. And just a reminder, um, if you have questions, please type those into the, the Q&A chat box. So um, our next question is for, for all of the panelists, really. Um, so there's, we all know there's still a lot of anxieties um, around COVID-19 and how to, to safely be able to visit restaurants and visit hotels. 
Um, can y'all talk a little bit about, in your opinion, how you think we go about reestablishing um, that comfort level and kind of faith in the hospitality industry um, to, to encourage people to come back in? I think from a hotel standpoint, it's about educating our guests and our clients. Um, I know that Marriott um, and the other brands are um, doing a lot of advertising and um, communication to our audience out there to let them know um, some of these procedures. I expect that you'll probably see some of those here soon. Um, and just educating everybody about the different practices. Um, we give our guests a letter when they check in. We have signage throughout the hotel um, so that they know that um, we are taking it seriously and, and we have their best interests and our staff's best interests at heart. Thank you. So this, this next question um, is for Damien. So those of us that have gone inside the grocery stores have noticed that some of the shelves are not fully stocked. And so supply chain has been affected um, for a lot of businesses. Damien, have you seen your supply chain affected and how have you pivoted based on the supplies that are available? Um, we have seen a little bit of, um, I guess, change in the supply chain. We, our purchasing um, team are ahead of it. Um, if during the lockdown, we, you know, we adjusted some, some things and we actually ended up getting frozen chicken instead of fresh chicken. Um, but then, you know, as we continued to ramp up business, we went back to that fresh, fresh product. Um, you know, they're ahead of it and they're monitoring it and they're constantly in contact with us about, you know, what may be coming, any substitutions that we may need to be looking out for. Um, now, as we get deeper into this, I, I can't really say, you know, is it going to change? Are we going to have shortages of certain things? But, you know, it's a possibility. Um, and that's why we did a little bit of menu reduction when we came back to full full service. Um, we reduced some of the items that were on our menu that we thought might be um, affected. Um, and then, you know, if it is not going to be available, then we're okay and open for having that item 86 until we can get it again. Um, you know, it's just communication with customers as to why. Um, and most people are pretty receptive to, you know, that kind of communication. You know, that, that item's been 86 or, or off the menu. Know, because we can't get the supply in. That makes sense. Thank you. So um, we have one one last question here, um, and and Lori, I'll I'll direct this to you. Um, can you talk about any if you foresee any future vul vulnerabilities um, in the hospitality sector, and kind of build on how we continue to, to build confidence when, within the hospitality sector while remaining safe. Definitely. Well, I think um, we, through this process, we did establish basically that uh, food and housing are two things people need. And they're gonna come back to our restaurants, they're gonna come back to our hotels because they need this as they travel. They're very basic, essential um, uh, human functions. So it's wonderful that uh, these companies are working hard to um, to respond to this uh, at such wonderful detailed levels. Um, here at the beginning, our biggest vulnerability is going to be coming um, lackadaisical and letting our guard down and just kind of letting things. Oh well, you know we're we're reopening everything, so people aren't as scared, so we don't have to worry as much. In reality, people are not interacting more, so we're having a higher um, uh, caseload of uh, COVID kind of each day. Um, so we want to maintain our ability to, to stay on top of it and stay vigilant. Um, that is uh, where I would challenge all of our managers um, to basically create an environment of, uh, of social distancing and uh, hygiene and cleanliness in their location. I really think that um, everyone is, wants to do the right thing. I think everyone 
um, you know, wants to, to keep their places clean. And I think they're doing a great job of it. Um, I just hope that uh, months from now, uh, when things kind of become very normalized, that we still keep this general basic line of, uh, of hygiene going. So, um, so I think that's kind of where our vulnerability might be. But all in all, I've been very pleased with the response that I've seen. Um, uh, most companies that I've uh, had information come to me from have been um, seeking information, looking for clever ways to, to make things work for their business because we're not cookie cutter. Not every place um, has the same challenges. So, uh, so I just love the fact that they're reaching out and trying to get their help with their uh, specific little spot on earth and how to make their place safe. Thank you, Lori. And that will wrap up our, our Q&A portion. So I just want to thank our, our panelists again, Brianna Fisher with Residence Inn by Marriott. Thank you so much for sharing your AIM Clean processes that you have. And again, we'll, we will share the recording and um, resources after the webinar so that um, if you want to implement any of those in your business. Um, thank you to Damien Newcomb with, with Torchy's Tacos. Um, I know that I love Torchy's and I'm always glad to see when I drive by that there's people outside and, and y'all are getting business. So I hope that, that trend continues. Um, and thank you, Lori, for being on the call and, and answering our county related questions. So. Um, we're, we're gonna wrap up at this point. Again, we will share this recording. You're welcome to share it with your staff and, and any, any um, partners that you have. Um, thank you again to Fast Signs of Round Rock for making this event possible and for sharing. And thank you all for joining and we will see you next time. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>